Good morning, everybody. It's so good to have you here. This is uh, after 10 weeks, and we have a good gathering. So God bless you, and thank you for coming. And I wore my mask outside and in through the door. And as I speak and make announcements and pray, I've, I've got it off. But God bless you. Let me open up in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you. We especially pray for this Sunday as so many churches are opening up. And Lord, we never closed. We were always online and had service. We thank you last Sunday for those who came and uh, today especially. I pray for our America. I pray for our nation. Lord, we see the good, the bad, and the ugly. We, we see the good yesterday with the space launch and men up in space, first time in 10 years or so. We thank you for that greatness of our nation. But we've also seen some of the good, the bad, and the ugly in the riots. And so, Father, we just pray that you would bring peace and calm. And we know that your word alone is true. So we pray and I lift up our nation. I lift up our church. I thank you for the body, for the people. But I also thank you that the, for the building that we can congregate in. So I pray that today this worship will be meaningful. And those viewing across America, and especially in our church family, and our seniors who I want to stay home if they, if they just have any doubt about coming. Lord, they worship with us. We love them, and I hold them up, and I thank you for their wisdom. I thank you for those that are healthy and here. Father, I just lift up the victory that's in you. And we thank you, God, that you know all these as I preach today. Lord, give me wisdom. Let my words be honoring to you. And let me not get off on any kind of personal, political rant or anything else. But let me uphold your word. But Father, we just come and we thank you. I thank you for all those that make this morning possible. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, I thought he was going to talk more. <laughs> We're going to sing, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. God has been faithful through all that we've been through in these last several days. So I just uh, thought this would be a good way to start out. Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God, my Father. Great is Thy
It just doesn't get any better, does it? Um, this song is about God's indescribability. Is that a word? Indescribable, uncontainable. Um, Audrey and I are going to lead you in singing this one with the track, so sing along with us, please. <laughs> To the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all explain. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and go in my face. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, awesome, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. Told every lightning bolt where it should go, or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who imagined the sun gives source to its light? It conceals us to bring us the coolness of night. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by day. You are the amazing God. All powerful, untamable, awesome, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. Well, once again, good morning, everybody, and it's good to speak to a room full of people. Uh, last 10 weeks, it was just the recording uh, folks, and uh, 
our music worship leaders and things. So it's good to see people, and God bless you. And I know I'm focused on a camera for live streaming, but if you see me looking around, I'm looking at people, okay? It's Amen. so wonderful to look at people and see you here. God bless you for coming out. I want to applaud you. I, I want to applaud you for your commitment to God's house, to God's family. Second thing, I, I want to give a, a shout out, and I, I want to thank and lift up and hold up our deacons. The deacons have been meeting for the last three weeks on our situation, and I respect and admire them. The deacons stood up and said, our church needs to make a stand. I respect that. And I want you to know that they have a commitment, a spiritual commitment, love for Christ, love for the people, and love for this church. So let's, let's give our deacons a hand. But before we do, I just want to say, we've got deacons that deke. So let's give them a hand. Bless you guys. I have to confess and admit that I've struggled with the sermons the last couple of Sundays. And I just want you to know the easiest thing in the world for me to do is to write a sermon and preach a sermon. I mean, I could do it. I can do outlines and the rhyming ones, just like that, I, you know, and, and things. And what I struggled with back then is elimination of stuff. And I, I, I just want to be so spot on and do right by the congregation during this time. And so I just thought that the title of my message this morning is Know the Times and the Seasons. One of my friends is Richie Fure, lead guitar player for Buffalo Springfield. And uh, he uh, became a pastor, he got saved, became a pastor and uh, in Colorado Springs. And I talked to him a couple of days ago and uh, they wrote a song uh, for what it's worth, Buffalo Springfield, their famous song. And uh, some of you younger ones may not relate with my generation and half generation after can. And the song, there's a passage in the song that says, something happened in here, what it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there saying, we must beware. Well, there's a double portion of that because something's happening here, what it is ain't exactly clear, but things are, are happening. Our liberties, our freedoms can be under attack. Our freedom of worship and religion and having church can be under attack and in, in shut down. But the house of God has never been shut down here. Amen. Doors in the building may have been closed for nine weeks, but we live streamed all over the world. And even though we've run anywhere between 80, the highest since I've been here is 135, we have over 10,000 view our Easter service. Amen. around the world we've been running three to five thousand views on our sundays and three to four to sometimes 500 one time 1300 our wednesday midweek bible study so the church has not been closed now people ask me two things before i get into the message during these times they've asked me two things number one they've asked when's the church going to open and i say the church has always been open amen Online, on Facebook, the church has always been open. And even though I talked about a soft opening today, I, I, I'm dropping the word soft. It's an opening. And I got news for you. Last Sunday, I did not open the church. Our congregation opened the church because we had people show up Amen. for the taping. So I praise God for you. And this is just a, a great, great group to, to be with. The other thing... Uh, more on a biblical technical term people have asked me and even uh, yesterday uh, as I was doing my prayer walk there was a couple out in front and I stopped and I and I wasn't wearing a mask they weren't wearing a mask and I just said hey you guys staying safe and they said they said yeah and uh, we started this we started talking and, and things and th they discovered that I was a pastor of a Baptist church and one of the discussion points then before I continued back on my prayer walk was is what's happening with this pandemic and th is this prophesied in the book of Revelation and I said uh, well not necessarily per se but it is leading to something uh, the spirit of Antichrist and a day and time when you'll have to have a certificate 
or a mark or a tattoo or something to buy and shop and do banking. And uh, we concluded how close everything, how close everything is. So this is a, a, a big lead on. So my message is titled, Know the Times and the Season. Something happening here when it is ain't exactly clear. We're, we're seeing riots all across, my, even my own hometown of San Jose, Cal, yeah, L.A., okay, New York, of course, Minneapolis, and, and things. There's a difference between protesters and rioters. I'll leave it at that, okay? There, there's, there's a big, big, big difference. But there's something, there's a spirit, there's an element out there that wants to take down America, take down the church, take down our economy, take down our system. And I don't know if it's a test runner or not. A, I'll leave that to the political commentators and the, and the wise men. I'm going to stay in my own lane today and preach the word of God. Amen. And with that in mind, I want us to look in Acts chapter 1, verse 7. I've got several passages of scriptures. I'm going to try to mishmox them in a mulligan stew. And I hope the stew makes sense and at least tastes good to our spiritual taste buds. But there's something happening here. There's something going on. There's a spiritual warfare in all of this. Put aside the politics, red state, blue state, an election, this guy, that guy. Uh, there's something going on. God is at work and there's first of all a spiritual warfare. So uh, we need to know the times and the seasons. It's called having a discernment and an understanding. And so Acts chapter 1 verse 7, uh, the disciples uh, asked the question, uh, Lord, are you going to you know, restore your kingdom and the kingdom of Israel and, and all that? And Jesus says in verse 7, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has put by his own authority. The times and the seasons. Even though God is an eternal God and he lives in eternity and he is not confined by B.C. and A.D., still he knows and is Lord of the time and the epics and, and what's going on. And I would venture to say today that we live in a unique time. I, as a pastor, in my 51st year of preaching and pastoring and, and ministry, I've never, ever seen anything like this. With the riots going on, it's reminiscent of the 1960s. If you were around and you knew the, the atmosphere, and it just seems like there's something organized. Yeah, it's the Antichrist spirit. It is the enemy, the devil, and the demons, and this Antichrist spirit that all of a sudden is popping up. And one thing that is different now than before, it's out in the open. Before it was hidden, before it was sneaky, before it was subtle, but now it's just totally out in the open. I'm a Christian believer in Jesus Christ, lover and obedient to the word of God as much as I know to be and can be first. But I'm also an American. Like many of you that have worn the uniform, raised their right hand to defend the Constitution of the United States and our freedom. It is under attack. But I've got good news for you. Jesus wins in the end. We win. Christ is victorious. Amen. Amen. Things may not look good in the moment. And I, I, even though I confess to you, I'm just trying to be a little transparent. And one of the things that have happened in the last couple of months is I've tried to be a little more transparent in my preaching, good, bad, or ugly. You know, uh, by the way, uh, Clean East would just turn 90. Amen. And he had that, you know, the good, the bad, and, and the ugly, and dirty, hairy. So one of my friends, you know, emailed me and said, my hero, Clint Eastwood, just turned 90. And I emailed him back, and all I said was, don't mess with Texas, don't mess with U.S. Marines, and by all means, don't mess with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> uh, where he is with the Lord, I, I don't know. I hope he finds the Lord and, 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 and whatnot. But we're seeing a spiritual warfare in our land. And we need to know the times and the seasons and what's going on, not just only in a political or historical context of the immediacy, but we need to see what the Bible is saying, what the Bible is teaching. So, as I said earlier, one of the questions I received 
is, 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 is this in Bible prophecy? Well, we're a day closer and things are lining up. Things seem to be lining up. It's God's business when it happens, but we need to be ready. We need to always be ready. And so I've always had a thing in my life where I live my life as if Christ was coming back the next morning or he's coming back in a thousand years so I help build the kingdom of God on earth until he comes. And that's kind of a, a good way to go. So let me get into my message. The times and the seasons. Jesus talked in the book of Acts about the times and the seasons. So we're going to take a look at all that's been happening biblically from the eyes of God. And then I have some applications to applicate on how to respond to this. First of all, the first thing is that we live in this time now that today is Pentecost Sunday. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Penta is, of course, the number five in the Olympics. The pentathlon has five, you know, penta. And so Pentecost was 50 days after Easter, 50 days after the resurrection. So I'm going to kind of hang the two shingles on the rooftop of this message on the events of the Passover in the Bible and the day of Pentecost and today being the day of Pentecost. It lives. See, these things didn't just happen back then. That Pentecost lives unto today. So we're going to take a look at Passover and Pentecost. We're living today in what could be described as a horrible time, whether it's temporary, whether that's going to be the new normal. I, I would always like the better normal and the best normal, and that's living in Jesus Christ and building his kingdom and letting the church be the church. Amen. Satan would love nothing more than to close down churches for eight, nine, ten weeks, but praise God, most of them weren't. They were broadcasting, live streaming, doing drive-in stuff, and the Word of God has gone on. Amen. And we reached out all over the world, and I just want to give a shout-out to Mark Monder and family there in Australia, in Perth, Bernardo Buya Buya there in, in, in Africa, and so many others and across the nation watching us. What great technology. Now, I confess, I'm a digital immigrant. I... Um, you know, all I can do is Facebook, and I'm terrified when I look at my device and it says, get a password and, and you're starting to count. I, I don't know how to do it. In fact, I'd rather walk into a room full of rattlesnakes snarling and hissing than to pick up a device that says, put in a passcode. Don't know how. Now, a five year old, six year old, 10 year old could do it just like that. And I praise God for uh, the Johnson girls, our tech crew, that know all that stuff. They, and thank you so much for being with us today and getting everything going and, and, and all that. But we need to have an understanding of the times and the season. And we're going to take a look. So I want to focus on two events in the Bible and two events that were alive for us today and in the last 50 days. Number one is Passover. Passover In Matthew 26, verse 2, this deals with the crucifixion of, of Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew 26, 2, you know that after two days, uh, this is Jesus speaking, you know that after two days, talking to his disciples, uh, you know that after two days, the Passover is coming and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. You know that the Passover is coming. So uh, let me address this and talk about what's going on with the pandemic and other things and apply it to our daily life. That, that's what people are hungry for. Oh, I, I could have spent 30, 40 minutes on, on talking about some dynamic deep truths about the Hittites. But that ain't going to do you any good right now. We need the encouragement. We need the strength of God's word. And we don't need to hear about the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Gerdicusites, the Uptites, and the Odysseites. We need to hear a, a fresh word, fresh fire from God today in our circumstance. So we have now ended the time between Passover and Pentecost. And we're going on and going forward. So the Passover... That ties in with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. In fact, the people that set him up, the kangaroo cord and the six bogus, phony baloney, good time, plastic banana, rock and roll trials, all six of them, phony balonies, illegal as, as all get out. Uh, it was, they tried to avoid the crucifixion during the Passover time. That's what the scripture says. But it happened. So just to brush up a little bit on some Old Testament truth. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is out of Passover. So the families, they would sacrifice a dove, a pigeon, a cow, this and that. And it would be in a ceremony. And they called it... Uh, the Passover after Exodus 12. The first Passover, the first Passover, the, the Jews, the nation of Israel, were in their homes, locked in. Oh, quarantine. Uh, have you heard the word quarantine in the past couple of months? <laughs> uh, we've been quarantined. Any of you gotten antsy and wanting to uh, get up? Uh, the, about two and a half, three weeks ago, Michelle and I decided we're just going to go to the beach. Because we heard the beaches were open. The, the beaches were open. So we drove down El Toro Boulevard, there where you hit, and then went this way. And the problem was the parking lots were open, and some had cars. But they were all gated. All the entrances access to the beach were gated off and had barriers and this and that. I guess people that had beachfront homes could go out in there. But, uh, you know, I guess their definition of open is different than my definition. Having a good batting average for Jesus Christ, so to speak. So I, I want to consider, as you see on your, on your bulletin, uh, four zones that, that we have been in. Where we're at. And where we're going, it's always good to know where we're at and where we're going, especially the old cliche, in such times like these. Wouldn't you uh, agree with me that in times like these that uh, we've never experienced something like this collectively and individually and things? And thankfully, in my sermon, I'm, I'm going to keep my politics and views to myself. If you want to know about it, you can ask me out in the parking lot and you'll know more than you want to know. Trust me on that. But see, there's four zones. First of all, the timing zone, the twilight zone, the truth zone, and the trust zone that we, we need to, to be in. We need to understand God's timing of things and the times that we're in to know the times and the seasons. When they asked Jesus, is this the time you're going to restore the nation of Israel? Jesus said, no, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons yet. This was before the day of Pentecost. This was in that transitional kind of in-between time. But we need to know God's timing, the way God works, to see God at work and to see the truth behind the views and the news and the lies the media gives or when they give truth to see God's truth and what God is doing behind that. America is a nation that was founded on some biblical Christian, Judeo-Christian values. And all of a sudden we've got some people that want to bring down the Constitution, tear down the Constitution. The Bill of Rights guarantees Americans the right of free speech, the right of assembly, and the right of exercising their freedom of religion. And there's a warfare, a spiritual battle, and a warfare, and an antichrist spirit in America and in the world today. Whether it's a test run for the future, or whether we're close to the rapture, or the rupture, or the second coming, or the great tribulation, I'll let the you know, theological minds that are way greater than my little pea brain mind. But something is happening, and no matter what, we are closer. We are at the door. Matthew 24, Jesus spoke about the end times. He was asked, what about your coming? What's going to happen? And Jesus talked about some things, and the scripture says, this is not the end yet, but it is knocking at the door. These are the birth pangs. And that's where we're at, Matthew 24, 8. We're at the birth pangs. And of course, you know, they come suddenly. And in the physical realm, it's 
only nine months uh, for the birth. And of course, God's time is not as our time. But we need to realize the timing zone. That God is in control of time, of the seasons. God is in control and on the throne. God is a God of eternity, but he still has a time clock. And I would venture to say and step out, some might resist this, but Israel is one of God's timepieces, one of God's time clocks. Amen. And in May 14, 1948, when the nation of Israel regathered constitutionally as a nation after 2,000 years of being scattered all over, that is one of the great events. Those of us that have been alive during that time, I was born a year after. Those of us that are living past this time, we are in one of the most wonderful biblical times to ever be. Thank God for His grace that we are alive at such a time like this. Because any moment, and even in the middle of my sermon, we can hear the trumpet sound, and we're all out of here. And we're face to face with Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? We win. Amen. Just like those two astronauts left the earth and out there to get out of space. And I want to make a comment on that. I, my generation, we grew up. Alan Shepard, Gus Grissom, John Glenn, Neil Armstrong, all these heroes, all these heroes. And as a young boy, I mean, life stood still when they had the NASA thing. You know, that day, watching it and then, you know, because I, I remember back to the Vanguard days, and some of you do, when the rockets blew up on the launching pad in what was then called Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy now, they still sometimes use Canaveral, but uh, I grew up watching and, and seeing Alan Shepard make that suborbital flight, and he was a Navy guy. And then John Glenn, John Glenn, the first man to orbit John Glenn, Marine Corps pilot, Ura. Guess who his wingman was during the Korean War? Ted Williams, the baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. He would have broke Babe Ruth's home run record if it wouldn't have been for the years he spent in World War II serving and the Korean War. The orbit, John Glenn, I knew those astronauts, I knew their names, and then all of a sudden it became so common that it was Oh, yeah, did they launch something yesterday? Oh, wow. First time in 11 years we sent people up. And so that is to the glory of our nation, the greatness of America. And we see the extremes, the space launch. But then we see the tearing down of our businesses and, and cities and, and, and whatnot. We need to know the timing zone and also the fact that we're in a twilight zone. We're kind of in an in-between time. Uh, we're, we're in between the Passover and today the day of Pentecost. We're in the time past and we're in that twilight zone where Christ can return any time. When I was a young boy, one of my favorite TV shows, if not my all-time favorite TV show, was Twilight Zone. And I used to, you know, see the Ross Serling make his little commentary. And as a young boy, about nine years old, ten years old, I'd watch those Twilight Zone things. And they used to scare me. I mean, they used to totally frighten me. And now that I look back at them on the Me Channel and on these other channels, I laugh at them and say, that was nothing. Why was I scared? You know, it, it's part of the imagination. But we live today in somewhat of a Twilight Zone of kind of an in-between of things, ready at the Lord knocking at the door, Matthew 24, 8, the beginning of birth pangs, beginning of birth pangs, and those of you ladies that have had a child, you know that once the birth pangs come, even though there's the pain, that child comes pretty quick, or relatively, it seems pretty quick. The timing zone, the twilight zone, but we need to also live, especially in the truth zone. We need to know the truth. We need to be discerning. And our first fulcrum and foundation of truth is the inerrant, inspired word of God. What the scripture says, what God says. It is the truth zone. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Satan, the enemy, the devil. Uh, he, he wants to do two things. He is 
an angel, and of course an evil angel, fallen. he is an angel of deception and division. Okay, just think of, I'm going to be quiet for a few seconds so you can think about the way Satan brings deception. And then division, have you ever heard of any church that divided or split or there's division? You know, he, he's a God, a false God of deception and division. I thank God that this pandemic has not divided our church but has drawn us close together. I praise God that I have the blessing and privilege of, of pastoring a very, very mature, spiritually mature group of people at Arbor Christian Fellowship. Let me tell you a secret of being transparent. I don't deserve this church. And I sometimes wonder if they deserve me. But God put me here, praise God. I'm still learning and still growing. And, and so we are in the truth zone, knowing the truth which leads us to the trust zone. But we are in a period in time of deception, division, derision, and delusion when we need to be in a time of decision. As Joshua said, as for me and my family, we will stand for the Lord. As for me and my house, we will stand for the Lord. And that's what we need. And you know what? I can't think of a greater time in my lifetime to witness for Jesus Christ and to share for broken hearted or broken people or scared people or people wondering what's going on, people unsettled or people that are experiencing this. Uh, it's a great theological word uh, from the Greek. Uh, it's called discombobulated. I should write a book called The Theology of Discombobulation. And all of us in, in one way or sense have been discombobulated. So we see that, that the timing zone, what God is doing, and what time it is. Remember that song by Chicago? Does anybody know what time it is? Does anybody really care? A, a great song. I like that band. I just wish they were a little more guitar heavy. They were more vocal, but that's me. You know, I'm a fanatic and not for overdriven, distorted guitars, but that's another point. I'm, I'm, I'm tempting and threatening to play here sometime, you know, but we'll see. That's not my decision. Uh, Greg and I have talked about working on a duet on a song uh, and, and stuff, but we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, let me just give you some things to think on and some things to chew on uh, about this time that we are now past Passover, Redemption. We're on the day of Pentecost, which means residence. God now resides on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came to the church. It is the birthday of the church. The church was founded. And now through Passover, Christ our Passover, we have redemption, forgiveness, eternal life. But through the day of Pentecost, we have residence along with redemption. Christ is in us. And as I said earlier, our church and our land, for the first time in 3,500 years, didn't just celebrate Passover. We experienced it like the children of Israel, locked down, locked in for fear of the virus. We are living in fantastic, wonderful times. Applications to applicate. And then I'm going to tell you, as I close, what we can learn from this pandemic. And I hope it makes spiritual sense. I, I hope I can say it with great clarity and great charity this morning. Applications to applicate. Two things. Be courageous and be contagious. Those two things. Be courageous. Holy boldness. Have courage. When you see your neighbor struggling, when you see some situation or a family member that doesn't know Christ, this is a great time to be courageous and have holy boldness to be courageous and, and speak and, and, and share. And, uh, these past months have given me some very unique opportunities. Uh, I, I haven't been meeting with some of my Starbuckaroo guys, but they called me on the phone. And ask how you do, and this is talking with you. And then, of course, the conversation gets towards Christ and, you know, this and that, what's going on. But be courageous. Be courageous. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, but drink the sincere milk of the Word and the overflowing, splashing, rushing river of redemption through Jesus Christ in the Bible. 
some things that are happening. Be courageous. Have holy boldness. Second, be contagious in your witness and example. Now they're talking about this virus, how that it is uber contagious and, and so contagious. And uh, we can be contagious in our love for Jesus Christ. People can see it in us. We can infect others with the love of God. We can infect, instead of being inspectors and judgmental and criticizing, being inspectors for God. We need to be infectors, infecting people with the love of Christ and the blood of Christ that we're covered, we're forgiven, we experience the Passover, and we know Pentecost, the residence of Christ in us. By the way, on the day of Pentecost, they, all the people from all the nations heard the gospel in their own language. And that's why we support world mission as a church. We're, we're, we're just a great missionary supporting church in, in our giving. And I'm hoping once the dust settles that in, in, in the end of this year or next year that our church can make some mission trips. I've got a tremendous amount of contact where I've spoken before all, all over the world and with our international mission board and some of our members can come out of the confines of South Orange County and Yuppieville and go into the world on a four-day, five-day, ten-day. God will provide the way. God will provide the finances. But the day of Pentecost not only became a day of residency for us with the Spirit of Christ coming into us through the Holy Spirit, it was the beginning of the worldwide mission movement that has by the way, one of the reasons I'm a Southern Baptist is that we historically have had the greatest, biggest, and largest missionary force in the history of world missions. Amen. I praise, I praise God for that. I've preached all over the world at our mission stations with our missionaries, and uh, that's why we support. That's why we do Lottie Moon. I'm hoping that when we do Lottie Moon this December, late November, to have a a conference, a, a missions, world missions prayer conference, kind of a way of getting out of our lockdown and just opening up more and more. But we see that we need to be courageous, we need to be contagious. Let's not be careless, prayerless, or dareless. Let's not be careless, let's not be prayerless or dareless. God is taking us to new levels of surrender and commitment in this pandemic. New levels of surrender and commitment. And it is always time for the church to be the church. So let me wrap up and close with this. And, and this may be the, the most important part. God gave this to me as I was praying. I've gone on a prayer walk around the, and things and, and prayed. and I, God just started downloading I mean, God just started downloading. And so God told me what we can learn from this pandemic as individual believers and as a church, as a body, what we can, what we can learn. The word disciple, by the way, Christ's disciple, uh, takes it a step further than just being a believer. The believers to become a disciple. The word disciple comes from the Greek word. You thought I forgot Greek, right, the last few Sundays. Uh, you know, I'm not quoting Greek. and You thought I forgot. No, I had it. Uh, just waiting for the right time. Uh, the, the word disciple is from the Greek word mathites. Mathites, M-A-T-H, just think of math, and then ites. Literally the word means learner. Learner. You see, you die when you think you're a know-it-all, though you may live another 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We need to constantly keep learning. Of God. That's why Jesus said learn. Learn from me. And then he said, learn about me. Learn me. Learn Jesus Christ. Learn what he is. Learn what he's like. Read uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Pour, pour through it. Read it. Reread it. Study it. Folk, even if it's one or two verses. Jesus said, learn of me. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ. 
And all this stuff hasn't done or stopped anything about discipleship. Now, we're praying and looking for a way to restore our Sunday school, uh, be it classroom or online or in a forum. We've got a couple of fantastic, two or three fantastic adult teachers from our classes here. This morning, we got a very great children's ministry. And so I'm looking sometime in the next couple of weeks and help me on this. Uh, I, help me on this. My mind may not be enough. I need input and help from our teachers and from you on continuing. And uh, if it's on Zoom, fine for a while. If we meet again uh, like we used to, you know, it's all in God's hands and all in that God's timing zone. But those are the things that we're looking at. We're looking at restoring Sunday school. It may not be configured the same way at first, and uh, but our people are very flexible. Uh, we're looking at and praying about vacation Bible school, having real live vacation Bible school and, and workers and, and things. So pray with me. Help me. I'm open to any of your suggestions. In fact, I need your help. I can't pastor this church without you. I can't pastor this church without you. And sometimes my ideas can be out there, stupid, outlandish, and sometimes they're right on. Sometimes I just don't know the difference, okay? You can help me in that. You can really help me in that and help us and our families and our children. We've had a great build-up. Now, our daycare preschool has been meeting all along, Monday through Friday, and our workers, because they've had masks in the day room and, and things. And, but we just want to continue on, continue on. People are saying they'll never be the same again. I hope not. Instead of the old normal or the new normal, I want the best normal in God. Amen. The best normal from the Word of God. And by the way, being a Christian is abnormal. You're walking out of step with the world. So you're not normal. That goes back to my parents. When back we had our teenage fights when I was a teenage boy. And after we'd have our knockout, drag out, everybody's crying, everybody's forgiving. You know, my mother would shake her head and says, how come we don't have a normal child? <laughs> How come he's not, my mother, he's, this, he's not normal. Well, you know what? <laughs> hey, enough said there. <laughs> okay, so let me get to where the rubber meets the road. What can we learn from this pandemic? Number one, God has gotten our attention. Number two, God has gotten our attachment in some new and fresh ways. What well, can we learn from this pandemic? God is still in control. Amen. God is still in control. He knew it was coming, and whether it happened in a blown-up lab in China or whether they were doing this as chemical, biological warfare against the Western world and against America. I love Chinese people. I preach much in China, but the Chinese communist government is not our friend. They want to destroy us and rule the world. Oh, by the way, every once in a while, pastoral preaching needs to have a prophetic tinge to it. God is still in control. God allowed this pandemic to test us so we could trust him uh, to see if the church will be the church. See, Satan and the world would love nothing more than to silence churches and close them down. Our church, along with tons of other churches, were never silenced. You saw us on, on, online. You saw us on uh, archives of websites. Those of you in Africa and Asia and Australia and across America, especially up and down California, our church was never closed. It was always being church. Yes, the building, but now the building has been open the last two Sundays, and people have come. God bless you for being here. He, he allowed it to test us so we would trust him. To have a time of witnessing, a, a, a time of ministry to others while they may be suffering or loss of income or need prayer, or more open to talk about spiritual, deeper values. You can't have a church that is silent. That verse, Hebrews 10, 25, where it says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourself, as is the habit of some. I always used to interpret that as a church member skipping church. 
But at the same time, the church has to be the church and be open and be available and be there in whatever shape, form it is, even if it's having worship with the speaker on the parking lot and, and windows down or online. And, and we've been doing that and we've reached so many people. And I hope and pray if you're watching online within the vicinity of Lake Forest, South Orange County, come join us. We meet every Sunday Amen. at 1045. Come meet us. Or if you're watching, just put key in. Watching, watching. I'm here. I'm here. I'd love to meet you. He tests us so we can trust him. It's a time for witnessing. Yes, there's a possibility, a good possibility that this situation is a probationary judgment from God, as I said earlier, for us to get his attention, attachment. You see, Satan at work in this has brought things to new levels of deception and new levels of division. People are, are divided. One of the things that I dread and fear, hey, I, I, I'm human. Just because I'm big blowhard up here preaching and teaching, it doesn't mean I don't have a heart, don't have a brain sometimes, or have feelings. And I know half the people would say, Pastor, you're irresponsible having the church open. The other half will say, Pastor, you're a coward. Doesn't really matter in the eternal run what people call me. What matters is what God says about me and about you. Amen. And I praise God for our deacons who said it's time to take a stand. And they made their preparations and set things in order to make today possible. And I'm so grateful to our deacons. We've got deacons that deek. And trustees we can trust. I've seen it in the past month. Praise God. So let me tie this all together and finish. Satan is doing new levels of deception and division. The world, new levels of derision. I can honestly say, not because I'm a pastor, and it's my work and my call and my job, is that I, I just felt a, a little nonplussed about how at the beginning it was like the church didn't even exist. They talked about bars being open and this being open and, of course, abortion clinics being open and you know, cannabis shops being open, and you know, if you're in pain and you're sick and you need it, God bless you, I encourage you. They, I think they take out the THC hallucinic stuff in it, and it's, it's good for, for pain. But all those things are open while the church is closed. I am grateful, no matter what your politics is, whether you're green state, blue state, red state, something in between, whether you voted for Trump or you hate the president, I am grateful for a president that would stand up and say, the church is essential and needs to be open now. Praise God. Amen. And how you vote this November if we get a chance to vote, because I think some of this may also be to disrupt our nation, our election, disrupt our economy, all kinds of craziness. It is of the devil, it is demonic, it is an anti-Christic spirit, and we as Christians need to know the times and the season, the time zone, the trust zone, and the truth zone, so we get out of the twilight zone Amen. in all this. This pandemic has brought us to new levels of surrender unto God. New levels of sensitivity. New levels of sensitivity to what is happening. Yes, we're on the edge and on the cusp of the book of Revelation. Not there yet. But we're a trumpet blast away. Everything is ready. Everything is set. God's grace is still giving our nation, America, time. A new surrender. A new level of serenity also. A new level of surrender, a new level of sensitivity, a new level of, of, of serenity, peace in God, no matter what happens, no matter what we see on the television. I, I chose the last couple of days to turn it off. To just turn, and you know, I'm one of these news junkies. 
You know, I wanted to be a journalist and uh, went to, I was going to go to San Jose State, uh, be a journalism major, and I was hoping I'd be the sports writer, a sports writer for the San Jose Mercury News or the San Francisco Chronicle or the Oakland Tribune and enrolled in San Jose State College, uh, you know, as a journalism major, but never showed up. I went instead into the service. But I'm still a journalist, except I'm doing the good news. Amen. The great news. The good news of Jesus Christ for a lost and dying world that's doomed. And the only hope is to be under the blood, to go from Passover to Pentecost. Redemption from God and residence of God in our life. Satan has brought us to new levels of deception. The world has brought us to new levels of derision against the church. But God has brought us to new levels of devotion and the church to new levels of declaration. Amen. Cannot have a silent church cowering in the back, afraid. But we must, as our deacon said, take a stand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus as the old hymn says. I'm sorry if I'm passionate and, and all that. I, I can't help it. I know my wife keeps telling me, tone it down. I, all my ministry, I've had people tell me, tone it down, tone it down. And in my older age, and I've gotten worse because I see more clearly the truth, the truth of God's Word. Amen. And loving God's people. Loving God's people. Well, that's it. Very... Unelegant ending. I crash landed the sermon. That, that's it. <laughs> if I say any more, I'll repeat myself and hurrying on, and you'll say, "Shut up, Danny," which I would rightly deserve at this point. Two things: stay courageous and stay contagious. Contagious. Live such a life that people will say, "That person, she, he, he's got something. I, I don't know what it is, but, but what is it?" I, 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 I want to know. And then there's an opportunity to say, it's because I've got Jesus Christ in my heart, in my life. Amen. And I go to a, a church with a crazy nut pastor, but uh, <laughs> I've got Jesus Christ in my life. Courageous, contagious. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, and we thank you that we can have open church, but we've been having church, but online, and now we've expanded to live people all over online. Lord, teach us to be courageous, contagious. Let us see the times and the seasons. Let us know what's going on. Move us, move us from the twilight zone into the truth zone and the trust zone. I thank you for the history and the life of this church. And I thank you that this church has always been the church and will continue to be the church. Bless every person here. Bless their families. Bless those viewing. Bless our church members. Those of you that are viewing. I, Lord, I pray for our seniors that have wisely stayed home. They've done the best spiritual thing to protect their health and the health of others. And we pray for a day and a time that all of us can unite and, and meet. But we thank you, God, that you're in control. I thank you for those that have led this worship and the music and the people that are here. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Or you can mail it or bring it to the church office. God bless you.